Welcome back everyone. We got the 98 Toyota Camry here, which is nothing short of automotive perfection. Preferred by 90% of professional frogs. But certain members of the family have been voicing their dissatisfaction with this door handle. And I mean, most of it is still there. But unfortunately, that's just the kind of entitlement age we're living in. And I must occasionally give in to outside demands for outrageous luxury. So we've got a perfectly matched new door handle here. Now let's figure out how to get it on there. I imagine we're going to have to get this door panel off. Fortunately, it's from the 90s. It actually has some screws there. I don't care much for power windows, but at least there's no window crank to remove. Well, that pulls right out. Let's see, what was it supposed to do? Yeah, it's supposed to do that. This tucks in under there, and there's a springy steel clip there. Okay, then we can unplug that. Set it aside. Here. This looks like it's hiding something. Need something sharper. There we go. Get rid of that. Another Phillips screw. How about this guy? Ah. Should be getting close now. Oh, there's another. screw. A little tugging. Oh, still got to get this out of the way. Looks like a spacer has fallen out of the speaker and there was a pen in there. There's it popped loose. Come on. There it is. Okay. Yes, ideally you would slide that back. And then these two are snapped onto there and there. Okay. We didn't break anything. Now it should be ready. Lift up there. All right. That's a terrible speaker. Actually, it's made of a moisture-resistant material. If we could get a surround replacement kit for that, it would probably not be worth the money. But I hate to waste things. What a funny-shaped frame. I wonder if I have anything that goes in here. Got a little plastic shield down there. And that is soldered in. Is there a plug back there? 
Oh, it goes all the way up here. There we go. I'll see what we got on the pile. And see about reconditioning that. Anyway, back to the door handle. Is uh, over there somewhere. Okay, probably need to put the window up. We're gonna need the controls. There we are. Door handle. Okay, looking at the new door handle to see what we're looking for in the dark of the door panel. We see two threaded inserts there, which will be what holds it in. And then we'll have to remove an operating rod with the standard sort of plastic clip there. So looking in there, we see, yeah, there's a bolt. The camera doesn't fit in the door. Anyway, there's one bolt. Let's see, the other one's over there. There's that rod. Okay then. Get the little ratchet and what uh, looks like a 10 millimeter. Okay. Got the near bolt out. It looks like the far one there does not have clearance for the ratchet. So we need a wrench on that. And you can just see it through this hole there. Okay, I've just dropped my flashlight all the way into the bottom of the door, so let's remove this access looking panel here. Maybe that'll make this whole thing easier. There's the flashlight. You peel this back nicely, you can reseal that. Okay, now with my right hand from within the door, I can operate the camera. Well, you see me reach for this plastic clip. And just press it until it snaps off of the rod there. Swinging it out of the way. There it goes. Winds up like so. And then the rod should pull out. I can't even see which direction I need to pull. Let's consult the handle. Ah, yes. Toward me. It looks like on the one in the door, there is another bolt up in this position where this hole is not completed. Good. Some more adaptations to be done for aftermarket parts. Okay, looks like the only way to get at that fastener is through this hole with the long extension, preferably with a wobbly end on it. For a little flexibility. And then you drop that into the bottom of the door. It doesn't fall into the bottom of the door because there's way too much funny shaped stuff in there so you get some kind of retrieval tool. I can't find my magnet. Where is that stupid thing? There. Now that's a coarse threaded thing designed to go into the plastic so I imagine that if we drill that a little more we'll be able to use that. However, the ones that I removed from these locations are also coarse threaded things designed to go directly into plastic. That's not what those are. So, we're going to have to go to the metric fastener assortment. So watch out for that. Okay, it's just that last tab on that end on the left. It's kind of tight. You just got to Get your screwdriver under there like so, and pry that outward so the bottom will swing out. 
They're looking through the access hole again. That rod is being rather more difficult than other rods like it. Okay, just not able to show everything all the time. But this is the first time with one of these types of retainers that I had to actually get the screwdriver in the slot in the plastic there and pry the plastic open a bit to slide the metal out of it. And we're out. An installation is reverse of removal, but somewhat different because of awkwardness and aftermarket parts. Let's go find some bolts. Uh, and this hole on the new one isn't even started at the correct angle. It's square to the piece rather than to this area that is on an angle here, like so. So we need to re-drill and finish drill that so that it's perpendicular to the face of this here. And it looks like in the case of this one that it goes pretty much all the way through. The uh, bolt just started to punch out the back of it. Good thing this was so cheap, eh? Well, these days you see stuff like this on the expensive parts too, so I tend to just get the cheapest ones to avoid ultimate disappointment. At least you expect this kind of crap in this situation. Uh, these bolts are all too long. And these bolts are all too American. And long. And no help here, except that we now know we're looking for a 6mm by 1 by shorter by like 8mm ideally. It looks like it's time to take matters into my own hands again. But I am not going for a drive. So being sure to put a nut on there first so we have some chance of repairing these threads when we're done. Uh, I needed it about that long. And back that off. And in theory, I would be able to thread that back into something. Hey, a cool new box. Days. Plenty of air in here, but there we are. It's an entire Nissan D21 front end. All the steering parts and ball joints for $160. So I guess that's the way to buy that stuff now. Okay, well, center link. Idler arm. Lower ball joints. And one end of each tie rod. Looks like the rest is coming later. Then I can finally straighten out this irregular tire wear. Anyway, with the nut placed back on there, let's just clean up the edge here a little bit. Give her a try. All right in. Okay. Let's go to work. Okay, after pausing momentarily to make up some fancy jaws for the vise here, now I've selected the 3 16th drill bit to match the old holes there in the old piece to go ahead and drill this one in the correct direction and most of the way through perpendicular to this face. Actually, what I'm doing, Brennan, is called eyeballing it. That's what the professionals do. Carefully. That's going all right. And just barely through there like the other one. All right, that better work. You know, to make this easier, when I'm in the confines of the door panel, I'm going to go ahead and do our plastic threading now. 
and as you may not have seen in previous angles, the flange on this lock cylinder lines up with both of the bolts on the handle. So it goes through this flange, and through that, into the handle and the hole we just made, and then the lower threaded one goes there. Let's see if we can get everything lined up here. Okay, top in first. And getting that lock cylinder into place. Okay, that's close. Okay, there we are. Now, pop those tabs into place. Okay, seems to be in position, roughly. I'm gonna get this top one in first. That'll be the most difficult to line all of these items up. We started there. Okay. Of course, you want to drop your socket into the door. Where did that go? It actually made it to the bottom. How fortunate. Okay, then with that top bolt in but not tightened So as we can still move things around we'll go for the lower one on the same side there through the lock cylinder flange Since all three of them are in we can tighten them down, but not very tight You just press that rod into the plastic insert Until it snaps in there and swing this down. Just swing it down, there it goes. And clip that. Oh, there we are. And clip that over the rod. At this point, the door should operate. That is, if it's not in the locked position. There we go. Wonderful. It's like cheating. All right, thank you, lazy guy. I'll take that. Ooh, getting rusty. Wasp. Oh, there they are. Wasps don't need six and a half inch three-way speakers. All right, fits the hole. I'll have to go get the self-drilling sheet metal screws after I attach the wiring harness. Okay, wiring's behind this guy. So I'll snap that off of there. And there's a bit of glue on there. Requires some gentle prying. down in this tab. They did things pretty nicely in 98. Come on, tab. There we go. Okay, let's see if that will desolder readily. Shut up, train! We all know you're a train. All right. This must be leaded solder. Wasn't it nice? Now it's very nice at the electric bench to have a nice soft wire wheel, something like this, on a rotary tool. So these rusty terminals. Now slip those in there. Of course, noting the correct polarity. And solder, to say it the American way. Solder, solder, solder. And we're getting it all over the place. Still having a bit of trouble sticking to that filthy terminal. But the flux in the solder here is starting to clean it up. Of course, it would be nice to have some separate flux. It's on the list. Yes, that'll do. We had to pry this thing off of there anyway. I'd say we go ahead and use it to shield our new speaker. And we fish that back into place. And this plate with the glue on it will 
hold that speaker there while I put the sheet metal screws in. If I put its original screws back in. We plug that back in up here. And stick it back in the hole. Yeah, I've got some self-drilling sheet metal screws there. And we just finish those by hand. Plastic here, this original gunk is still soft and we'll hold it in place. If you wanted to get fancy, you could put new sealant on there. I sometimes do. A little foil tape should do. Remember to reinstall the excess cover. Then the door panel. Fish the control wire through here. And then we've got to hook the top part in there first. Start in this corner. You can shove that all the way in so that the middle bit hooks over the flange there. Line up those plastic fasteners that pop into place here. Get the screw back in there. And a little cap. If it doesn't give me too much trouble, all right, we'll keep the cap. A little screw over here. Thing. Large screw and door handle. And a plug. And the two screws at the bottom edge. Plug the controls back in. And then slip the front in first. And the rear snaps down. And that's a little mangled at this point. Good enough. I think this would just be another thing to rattle at this point. I think we'll be fine. So there we go, a lovely reconditioned door now with handle and speaker. I wonder if the radio works. Oh well. So I hope you enjoy the many tangents of the repair process there. And if you enjoyed that, I have lots more automotive projects coming up and I hate to nag but I used to make a little money doing these videos and now they've taken that away until I reach a thousand subscribers. The really stupid thing about that is there's also a watch time requirement and I have about double that. But they've shut me off due to subscriber number. So if you haven't subscribed please do so. You can unsubscribe later. Thanks for watching.